during this trip, um, of course, you know, like when I used to do full episodes of Tam Tonight, I would have the politics segment. And um, since then, like, I've only been doing interviews and stuff. Watch Tam Tonight. I feel like y'all didn't really watch it. That's why I stopped doing it. Um, and it takes, like, a lot of preparation and time. But if you enjoy Tam Tonight, like, go to that playlist. Watch some of the episodes, like, the full episodes. Um, not just me interviewing artists. And let me know if you like it. If you like it, I'll bring it back. But anyways, politics. I'm in Memphis. And, of course, we're on the heels of the whole, like, Nashville shooting thing at the private school. Three of those three children senselessly lost their lives. And then some representatives, um, they stood up for it and they like spoke out against it or whatever. And because of that, those people were expelled from their position, their seats in the house. Justin Pearson has been the most outspoken about it. And it's just like, if you follow me on Twitter and you've been following me for a while, you know, I say like a girl commented on here and was basically like, I wouldn't, I really liked him tonight and I would have no problem supporting her, but she's always like has negative things to say about the South as if California is so much better. And like I make funny remarks, sometimes disparaging remarks about the South because it is true. It's hundred percent true all the time. I'm never like lying or saying things just to poke fun or to like take the piss, whatever about the South. It is truly a joke. Your politics are a joke. Your fame morality is the number one reason why I don't like the South and I don't respect the whole Southern culture, Southern hospitality situation because it is fake in my opinion. Y'all are super nice and cordial to everybody because everybody got a damn gun on their head. And you know if you come wrong, you will get shot. You know if you say something somebody don't like, it's not going to go well. That's all it's about. Southern people, in my experience, dealing with them in business personal things whatever are not any nicer any more pleasant any more going out of their way for you than a person in california or a person in new york that's just what it is just because y'all smile wave be fake nice say good morning to strangers doesn't have nothing to do with your true intentions are the same thing with the whole bible belt thing oh we can't drink on these days and we're not going to sell liquor at these times but we have abject poverty you can marry a teenager like you're a joke you're a joke you're halfway stepping with the bible and taking it like you have the moral high ground towards the rest of the country especially california like the coast where that lets you um that legalize marijuana and all these things you refuse to do that in the south although the tax money would greatly help your situation and y'all definitely need it education system poor health system poor living conditions poor um didn't alabama or something have a hookworm they said it was like the poverty was on the level of a third world country but y'all be so like pumping that Bible. Oh, you can't have an abortion, this, that. Like, shut up. You're worried about the wrong things. And now, because of just the whole ownership that the NRA has over our politics and the political situation. Outside of that, you're gonna use your again your fake Southern culture and your fake Southern heritage. Oh, we we love our guns and we need our guns. You trying to take our Second Amendment rights away, blah, blah. You're taking Jordan Justin Pearson's first amendment right away he can't speak out in defense of what of his constituents in his county that voted him in to speak up for him those people died for no reason because y'all are selling assault rifles to civilians people that don't have no business with them that are hopped up literally on the media like oh kill kill murder murder kill kill the music goddamn zombie apocalypse shows and all of this stuff this post-apocalyptic world that everybody is obsessed with now playing video games all day shooting up everybody call of duty and you think these people, oh, and then they get on the internet and they get to be in these forums with other people like them that hype them up that probably wouldn't really bust a grave in real life, but they get the most low level, the most hurt people and gas them up. Dylan Roof, gas them up. This girl who shot, and then I, I saw this man's opinion and he said, you know, we should stop publicizing the shooters. We should stop talking about them. We shouldn't show their picture on the news because it just inspires the next person. I agree with that. When I was younger, I used to think, oh, it was a way to shame that person and shame their family. But no, it's not. All it does is inspire the next person to do something worse or to give them the courage to go do so. Especially when the person just gets to sit in jail and get the death penalty, none of that. And I'm really against capital punishment. But I feel like if you run up in a place like a school, a church, a grocery store, whatever, and you intentionally go in to shoot up people, AR-15 strapped to you, extra ammo, uh, like, like you're a Navy SEAL, like you're a black ops. You need to get the death penalty. You had no problem doling out death to others. It's your turn. Step up to the podium. 
So these people aren't getting that. You get to go to jail. And it's like, oh yeah, I, I hate my life outside here anyway. That's why I went to go shoot the people. That's why I went to go shoot the nightclub. Up. So you putting me in jail, whatever. I'll, they'll probably find a community in there of killer psychos that like, you know, embrace them. I'm against it. Don't show them no more. I don't want to talk about it. That's why I refuse to acknowledge the person who shot up the school in Nashville because no, who cares? Who cares about you? They shut this man down because he was a voice of dissent against their business as usual. Oh, we're going to pray about it. But we're not going to legislate about it. And then yelled at him and was disrespectful. Like, you want to come in here and talk like this? All you need to do is pass a bill. Pass a bill. Like, shut your ass up. First of all, you're disrespectful as hell, and you know it's because you're in the South and you're a white man, and you still feel superiority against black people. That's another reason why I don't like the South, because that blanket deference that the people of color give to white people out there is absolutely abhorrent to me. Like, because you have white skin, first of all, your granddaddy probably wasn't even rich enough to own no slaves. Let's keep it a buck, because your situation would be better right now. You wouldn't be in here talking to me on my level. You would be like the Waltons. You would be like other families who are rich enough that don't got to work, don't got to do. Uh -uh. So cut that. You was probably an overseer's great-great-grandson. A poor white person. And all you ever had in your life and in your great-great-grandpa's life to stand on was the fact that, mm, at least I'm not a nigga. Oh, I'm poor. Oh, I'm dirty. Oh, I can't read and write. My wife, 14 and a half years old on her third child. But at least I'm not a nigga. That's what the rich white people put in y'all brain to make the other shit that they had going on cool and let it fly with y'all and now you have a problem because you're realizing you're not more important you're not special you're not getting any special treatment being poor is being poor martin luther king tried to help y'all with the poor people's march and y'all killed him down there in memphis as well so your situation is your situation now the rich white people don't care about you at all and most of them nine out of ten would never find themselves in a situation like you were in with your children being mowed down by a psychopath with the ar-15 because they're not allowing that in their communities and they're insulating their children and there are different things going on but when you live in the lower rungs of society in america you're subject to these things this type of criminality across the board all colors because crime is about proximity and i don't like it that when it's black people, y'all quickly turn, oh, it's black on black violence, all this, oh, it's the way they're raised, oh, it's the community, oh, it's the music, oh, it's the this and that. When it's a white person doing it, y'all want to go to mental illness or they had a sad life or talk about their depression. Nobody cares. Everybody's depressed. Everybody's sad when they're poor. Everybody. everybody. And then the other thing is, the biggest thing is, y'all don't call this shit domestic terrorism and that's what it is. Y'all made it, oh, fear the brown man, fear the Muslims, fear the head wraps. When it's really Daniel and Christina in them shooting up the movie theater when they get an attitude or when they can't get a girlfriend or a boyfriend so i'm really tired and i want because i watched this uh this tiktok message from this african like theologist man he was talking about easter is really about revolution and revolutionary practices and the hebrews being free from egypt and like going back to get their things get their money and god smiting their firstborns because of how they treated them now i don't want to say that y'all firstborns are getting smited because of the sins of your fathers and your grandfathers and your refusal to do something about it right now. But in a historical context, that's how it's looking. And if you'd be honest with yourselves, you would, you would admit the same, much of the same. That's how it's looking. And why is it that I really thought as a black person who grew up in like the hoods of Los Angeles, I thought, oh, Columbine, oh, that wouldn't happen again. That was the first one. And I was alive for that. I remember on TV. Oh, never again, never again. You could have never told me. You probably could never told my grandparents that y'all would get so comfortable with that money that that in our in our a that lobbyist check that you would let them mow down little white children in the schoolhouse and y'all wouldn't do nothing y'all wouldn't change these laws so that should let you know again that this is a class issue and the rich white people don't care because they're not in your situation they don't care and they want to keep getting their money off their things and if your child so happened to die or get shot, get paralyzed, get PTSD because they saw their teacher or their friend or whoever gets shot in their class, now we got bulletproof pullouts in classes and all this. Y'all trying to arm teachers like everything but fixing the root of the problem. The same thing y'all do with racism. Y'all like to dance around so y'all don't want to fix it. Now your kids, your firstborn, your children, your young children are getting killed, getting traumatized. And then I see the kids trying to speak up, doing the March for Our Lives, this and that. And y'all kind of turn a blind eye to that, like on some shut up and sit down. So it is really the masses 
of white people in America, the Trump supporters, the middle America, the Southern white people, middle class and, and below. They need to stand up and do something and demand from your government officials, your representatives, to do something about these guns. Because I went to school in the hood in Los Angeles and we never had a shooting in our school. And I'm not saying that as a joke, but I just mean y'all over police us so much from when we are children that that could never really happen in our schools, in our situation. Y'all got the metal detectors, y'all got the police on campus, you got this, it's like a jail. Y'all running like a jailhouse because you know where you want us to go and you know how you want our future to be. And you feel a certain way about what we deserve and how we deserve to be treated. But for y'all, the rules are different and you're paying for that. Also, I think that not calling them domestic terrorism, making excuses for them on TV and not demonizing them and just grinding it in like y'all do with black people. Oh, thug. Oh, he's a gang member. Oh, he did this and that. Gives these other white people license to go out and feel empowered to do the same thing. Oh, I want my voice heard. I'm going to go shoot something up. I'm going to write my manifesto. So everybody basically in, in the country reads it and knows how I feel in my position and I get my risk. It's not. It's not that. So look at it. I always say, oh, the difference between white people and black people and why we don't advance as fast politically as y'all do is because y'all ready to die about that shit. Black people are not really with that. We're more calm, peace. Oh, we'll deal with it. Oh, we'll suffer through it. Oh, we're going to pray about it. We're going to have a better life in heaven. Y'all are January 6th. Oh, we're going to climb the walls of the house. We're going to pee on the ground. We're going to make our voices heard. We need to be seen and heard, accounted for. Y'all letting your children die about this. And as parents, as adults, as grandparents, I don't know how you can sit with yourselves. I don't know how you can live with yourselves. Truly. Because this is not something arbitrary. This is not gang banging, drug related crime. Oh, you just live in a bad area and caught a straight bullet. This is plotted, planned out. Y'all were mean to me. Y'all did something to me. And I was raised a certain, I feel like I deserve more. I feel like I could take your life because you disrespected me, made me feel away. My grandmother, my dad was born before the Civil Rights Act of 1964. My grandmother had to go to a school, a black school on the black side of town. Imagine if them black kids uh, grouped up and was like, oh, we're going to shoot up that school because I'm tired of having subpar education. I'm tired of having, you know, no books at my school, mold on the walls. This, I'm, oh, I'm going to go shoot up that white school. Imagine if the Little Rock kids that were going to school was the Little Rock Nine. Arkansas 9, my bad, my brain, right? I'm, I'm upset right now. But imagine if those black people went into that school every day, James Meredith and them, Ruby Bridges and them. And they shot up your school because your granddaddy and your uncles and them was outside screaming and hollering, nigga, and don't come in here and made signs and was chanting. And they had to bring the National Guard out and the president got to talk on the TV to calm y'all down. What if they shot up the school? imagine how the laws would have changed remember here in california remember when the black panthers went up in the in the assembly with the guns out and y'all changed the laws now nobody can have a gun in california now you have a gun they put you directly in the jailhouse so is it is this the, is this another because we're not gonna do it for y'all but i'm just asking is this another situation where the black people need to do something for y'all to make the law does a black person need to come and do something wrong for y'all to change the law. I just want to know. When a black kid is bullied at school, do they need to shoot it up? And then y'all could do something? I don't want to sacrifice lives or nothing like that. I think all of that is wrong. But I just want to know if that's the solution. I'm sure we could get something going for y'all. Jordan Pearson, Justin Pearson, my bad, is taking on like this civil rights sort of style of speech and cadence and all of that and he's southern and he wants to be a great order and things have happened even obama has spoken out on his behalf don't take that as an opportunity to discredit him i see a lot of white people on the internet doing that oh he's fake martin luther king this that mm, be be quiet be quiet because y'all don't have nobody standing up for your rights talking about what you need to do for your kids and all that and he's trying to do it in shelby county in memphis probably one of the poorest counties in america if y'all being 100 with it the, the vast population of people not the few that live well the vast population of them so i really want to know and then i've seen some videos of the people of shelby county speaking out on his behalf and things like that to protest him i really want to know are we in a time in america where if we speak out against anything that's making y'all money we're gonna lose our job we can't talk no more we can't we're not gonna vote on those things we're not gonna because it's money to be made. We already know it's money over lives. We learned that during COVID. When who was it? The governor, the mayor, wherever Texas was like, people got to die. 
die so my kids can live. Y'all are bold about it. But I want to know how many of your children, your nieces, your nephews, have to die in school trying to learn to read and whatnot for y'all to do something. I don't have kids, so I really don't have no skin in the game. If I had a kid too, and that's one of the biggest things that I talk about all the time with my husband. If we have kids, my kids ain't going to no damn school for what? So y'all can shoot them? So somebody in there that was getting bullied about their clothes or their way to ever could come in and start, you know, lighting it up? No, my kids will be in the safety of their home learning. Because another thing about America, I've been in situations with my jobs because y'all let anybody get a gun and do what they want to do with it. I was in the um, Inland Regional Center, San Bernardino mass shooting. I was working there. Saw people getting shot. Could have got shot myself. Security guard saved our lives. Rushed us back into the building away from the bullets. Um, attempted robbery when I was a teller at Wells Fargo. The whole uh, Wall Street, march on Wall Street, blah, blah, blah. Somebody came into my building at work with a knife stab at security guard. So... America, y'all really have a problem, and you know it, and it's fine because just poor people are dying. But I want to know what has to happen. Let me know in the comments what y'all think about this. Again, this is I'm not trying to be like salacious. I, this is not a joke. I'm taking it very seriously. I just want to know, as a person who who hasn't brought children into the world that's maybe considering it, do I, I'm not gonna have a baby so I can shoot it. Let me know. Let me know what y'all think we need to do.